Let's go around with some... Um, I was going to say ship them, but it's no more of a train. I will check out the um, shower, because... Where's a good idea to shower? Oh, this is nice. Again, I'm going to do the classic thing of wouldn't to be far into a train. Speak to everybody on the way back. Reen, can't get sleep? Nah, I just couldn't resist the sight of that gorgeous moon or calming sound of waves. The thing I showed you is called Zector. Sorry, that's the most I'm going to say on that one. Hey, Valimar. Does the name Zector ring any bells? I feel as though I faintly remember that name. Ah, yes. Only a small fragment, I remember something. 250 years ago, during a war of the lions, Zector was named a divine knight under the sick prince's command. Just as I thought. Lucius Vesarnor. He was a pilot of the uh, Palatinate uh, Palatinet Knight. No, he did not pilot knight. The actual awakener was the leader of a mercenary group hired by the prince. He was a crafty individual, but he lent the prince's power. I see, so there's even a parallel between him and the Jaeger King. But wasn't the Palantinate Knight destroyed? Correct. As such, it is difficult to say whether or not the one you saw is the same as one or not, but as long as the Black Workshop and the Gnomes are involved, we could not rule out anything just yet. Yeah. I wish at least I knew whether or not we're friends or foes. Just because they're working against Ouroboros doesn't necessarily mean we're on our side. We simply need to pay close attention. If you come across any new facts, be sure to let me know. Yeah, door's locked. Oh, hey, teach. What's the matter? Can't sleep? Well, not exactly. Just that there's so much going on, I need to sort out my thoughts. Ah, oh, I know that is. I mean, how about you have a little drink for me before bed? Sometimes a little room to breathe is all you need. Yeah, I'll pull you a bit. This will really kick you over the teeth, but you'll probably just dip your tongue in it to start out. Oh, you weren't kidding. It's spiritus. Liquor from North Ambria. Said to be the strongest drink in the world. Guess it's kind of hard to get much stronger than 96%, though, huh? By taking a normal sip of this, I'd already been on the floor. I was stinging on my tongue. It's turning all sweet. <laughs> right. I knew you'd be able to appreciate it. Never thought the day'd come when I'd get to talk with you over drinks like this. That new Class 7 of yours? They're a good bunch of kids. Yeah. Still got a long ways to go, though. I'm struggling, I'm struggling as an instructor, too. Just wish I could guide them a little better. They're all pretty unique kids, just like you guys were. But I know things will work out for you. I mean, come on. They were all so worried about you, they ran headlong after you. I'm sure I had a bit of push from a certain someone, though. You already knew, didn't you? Who those purple Jaegers are. Yeah. What I said brought back some complicated feelings. At first I wasn't sure, but when I saw a reaction on you... Guess so. Guess I've still got a ways to go myself in that case. Back then, during Northern War, I couldn't do a thing. 
Spent all my time getting rid of your archism so it would let loose on the city. All the high-ups from the North Yeagers, the ones who work with other boas, got away. I can really see why they turned that into an anime now. If I captured them, Northumbria's government would have called for a ceasefire. If I could have stopped the annexation. That's a nice little scenario, Reen. But you know it's a load of bull, don't you? The annexation of Northumbria was done under the Imperial government's orders. Way I hear it. General Le Guin agreed to take the place over to keep the provincial armies from being disbanded. The outcome was decided from the start. That's... In the middle of that farce of a war, you managed to save the lives of tens of thousands of citizens. And the Jaegers you met today? I think they know that. But maybe it was impossible from the start. Fixing a country already being destroyed from within by Jaegers. He probably knew that too. Who? Whoopsie. Well, you see, he was... <laughs> he was my first love. Oh? Really? Well, actually, he was the closest thing I had to a dad. Way back during the Northambrian disaster, when the salt pail covered so much of the principality in a storm of salt, a man took in an orphaned infant. He was a former colonel in the army, and one of the people who founded the Northern Jaegers. As soon as I was old enough to understand anything, I knew that Jaegers who came back with foreign currency were considered heroes. The man who raised me was one of the leaders of the Northern Jaegers, the heroes of our homeland. I looked up to my dad more than anyone. Wanting to be just like him, I joined a juvenile Jaeger corps at the age of 10. After a few years of harsh training, I was admitted to the main corps at the tender age of 13. It was there that I experienced my first real battle. It was hell. A field of death, where lives are tossed aside to satisfy someone else's desires. There I lived, smoke and blood painted across my body. And there I stayed, eventually becoming the Jaeger known as the Purple Lightning. But after a while, it reached a point where I couldn't take it anymore. When I was 18, I was assigned command of a squad. We had a mission near Erebonia, fighting some proxy war on behalf of the nobles. The enemy was Needhog. My squad was destroying them. But just when we thought victory was ours, our efforts to avoid dragging any civilians into the fight left us open to a counterattack. And then my dad showed up and saved me. Even though he was serving as the commander for the entire corps, he came to our rescue and suffered a fatal injury for it. Do you see now? This is the fate of all Jaegers. You must think long and hard on whether you wish to continue down this path. It could have been because he was once part of the Principality's army, but he was quite the gentleman. Now that I think back, he never seemed to like the fact that I became a Jaeger. Anyway, he left me with those final words and passed away in my arms. I screamed and screamed until my voice gave out. Was that when Instructor Beatrix treated you? Yeah. Apparently they were there to check on the damage caused by all the Jaegers fighting. Neidhardt and Mueller Vander, who were both second lieutenants back then, were there too. They told me the battle had been over for a while, and all my comrades had already packed up and left for home. I hadn't even thanked them before rushing back to my hometown. And what greeted me when I got there were celebrations and congratulations from my friends and the townsfolk. We had lost my father, but we won the war we were hired for. The nobles had given us an enormous pile of Mira. That meant we wouldn't die of starvation during the coming winter. I was relieved, but my tears just wouldn't stop. In order to save my hometown from poverty, I covered myself in the smoke of war and the blood of innocence in foreign lands. Seeing the smiles on the faces of everyone in town and knowing the cost cut me deep. It was right then that I decided to quit being a Jaeger and leave my hometown. I joined up with the Bracer Guild, knowing I could put my combat skills to work and make some decent Mira if I hit A rank. That way I could send some money back home. Money that wasn't stained with blood. Oh. 
I finally understand. The true origin of your strength and kindness. <laughs> I'm not strong or kind, but I think I've finally started to get closer. Little by little. Closer to being like the man I admired so much. My dad. My commander. And my first love. But you are strong, Sarah. It makes sense now. No wonder you fall for silver, silver foxes. <laughs> yeah. No getting around the fact that I've got myself the daddy of all father complexes. But, you know, lately I've found myself attracted to some younger guys. Huh? Ah. You got me talking too much. You don't watch yourself. You could make a real dangerous womanizer. Well, with that, I bid you good night and sweet dreams. Oh. She is wonderful. There's no way you can't love Sarah. This wasn't some dream, right? Oh well. I'll just assume I've been tricked by fairies and evil summer festival. Now come on down. Why are you something like that? Is this someone outside? His voices don't sound like students. No, because it's Claire. Seems like there's someone outside. Shall I check? Um, stay here for now. <laughs> I didn't know that happened. <laughs> yeah, you and George really saved my bacon that time. Seems like things are going well. Oh, no wonder I haven't seen each other for a year and a half. Hmm, is that Reen I sense lurking out there? Oh. <laughs> Why don't you come in, silly? Looks like I underestimated you, Ange Angelica. That's my thing. Seems like you've really been sharpening your martial arts skills, eh, Angelica? Yeah, I went and visited a bunch of schools. I have connections to Taito. I think I've pretty much packed my head full of kung, kung fu by now. No wonder your movements are so sharp now. You're able to meet me your master again, right? One who first taught you, Taito? Yeah, she's awesome, Calvad. It's pretty hard to get over there to see her. But I was able to talk to her about a few things while I was there. Hmm? Well, I don't really understand anything about martial arts, but you're able to finish your cross continental motorcycle trip. Nah, I haven't been any, able to hit everywhere just yet. Went on the Bell, Remiferia, Ored, Le Mans, and Arteria. For everyone's able to make it to the Central Eastern part of the continent. But Eastern Samoa is kind of a tough nut to crack. He's in Samoria. I've only heard stories. Seems like the desertification has gotten worse and there's less and less land. That's why there's been such an influx of immigrants moving into Calvard. Actually, Master Cafe, my teacher, is there right now. Oh, is that so? Just what I expect from a founder of the Eight Leaves One Blade School. He has a local guild branch out there and they said it took me half a year to get to East Land. It was about what was going on at home here too, so unfortunately I had to give up and heading that way. Master Cafe said something like that in a letter he sent me. The dragon veins are nearly depleted. Those are words he used. Seems like we have had a lot to deal with over there too. If the Empire was in such a state, I would love to go over there and help, but... I was actually talking to about George as well. Is it possible to use our technology to support Eastern Zamoria and stop the desertification there? Once we can settle and done in the Empire, it might be something for us to look into. It's really our swing, Angie. You're right. We couldn't help a lot of people from other countries. So someday we just have to make sure we're not just contributing to the Empire, but to the entire, entire continent. Now you're getting it. You gotta dream big. That's nice. And next episode, I'll go and speak to um, Colonel and 
the icy maiden outside. Bye-bye.